Hi guys, we are back and continuing with Macbeth Act 5, Scene 6 and 7 today. However, you've just read Macbeth Act uh, Scene 4 and 5. And really the important scene there is Scene 5 where we see Macbeth learn um, that Burnham Wood is coming to Dunsinane, right? So he had, up until this moment, had all the faith in the world and the witches, and it made him feel incredibly secure. But now he's starting to doubt the equivocation of the fiend that lies like truth. Okay. Um, it also brings to mind uh, at the start of the play, Banquo, when they had first been told their prophecies, turned to Macbeth and said that he should be cautious because the instruments of darkness sometimes tell us partial truth, right? win us with honest trifles, ultimately to betray us with deepest consequence much later. And now here at the end of the play, we can see that that is true. Um, Macbeth uh, is starting to doubt the witches and he also learns that his wife has died, Lady Macbeth has died. And upon hearing about her death, Macbeth responds by, um, kind of, emo he has a lack of emotion. It doesn't even seem to surprise him in the least. And he just simply says, well, she should have died hereafter, right? There would have been time for such a word, he says. And then he retreats into his innermost thoughts in a very famous soliloquy called the Tomorrow Soliloquy. And he concludes ultimately that life is meaningless. And this is a very, very hopeless soliloquy and sad soliloquy. There's a lot of despair and images of despair within that soliloquy. Now in scene six, okay, very short scene here, we see Malcolm Seward, Macduff, and a bunch of soldiers outside of the castle where Macbeth is, and they have the tree branches all on them. Okay, so Malcolm begins the scene by saying, now near enough, your leafy screens throw down and show like those you are. This immediately reminds me of the theme that we've been talking about, appearance versus reality, right? They've disguised their appearances and now he is demanding them to throw down um, the disguise and show like those you are. Okay. You, worthy uncle, shall with my cousin, your right noble son, lead us first battle. Worthy Macduff, and we shall take upon us what else remains to do according to our order. He's giving directives, right? So I want you to imagine in any war movie that you've seen, you know, they're, they're probably yelling to one another. Um, and so he's giving directives. And Seward says, fare you well. Do we but find the tyrant's power tonight? Let us be beaten if we cannot fight. Macduff says, make all our trumpets speak. Give them all breath, those clamorous harbingers of blood and death. In the movie, the character Macduff that recites this is yelling it and then he fires his machine gun. Okay, so it kind of heightens the intensity of the scene. I am going to... I hope that you guys can see this now that I've switched pages. I, I'm hoping that you can still see it. But we're going to go right into scene seven, where um, we see Macbeth, okay? So now in this scene, Macbeth says, They have tied me to a stake. I cannot fly, but bear like I must fight the course. So I love the notation that's actually in your, your book. Um, so if you're following along here, you'll see that in the margin, it says in bear baiting, a common Elizabethan entertainment, dogs were loosed upon a bear tied to a stake. So this was a form of entertainment. And I think that this is also very important because quite literally, Macbeth is a play meant for entertainment. So there are audiences us as well watching this man come to his demise i'm going to go ahead and, and liken it again to the tiger king why do people 
take pleasure in seeing the downfall of a character on stage or in a television show or in real life. Um, I even had this thought the other day as I was driving on the highway, there were police officers on the side of the road. And of course, what happens when you see lights blaring and cones out and flares out, everyone slows down to look, right? People are drawn to the misfortune of others in this weird way. And that's something that can be analyzed further at a later time. But I do want to continue here in talking about how Macbeth is a tragic hero. There is something that's terribly sad about his impending doom here. He is very much tied to a stake. Um, he has no and not many options here. And so what does he do? He, de he declares that he is going to fight the course, okay? What's he that was not born a woman? Such a one am I to fear or none. Notice here that even though the first apparition started to, uh, you know, deteriorate and, and Burnham Wood did come to Dunsinhane, what does Macbeth do, okay? He, he leans on another apparition. What's he that was not born a woman? Okay, so again, okay, Macbeth is unable to think clearly because of what the witches have told him. Whether that's his fault or not, we'll talk about that later. Young Seward, this is the English general's son. What is thy name? Okay, so the two come face to face here. In the movie, I like how they do this. Unfortunately, we can't see that right now. Macbeth says, Thou, um, thou wouldst be afraid to hear it. Young Seward says, No, though thou callest thyself a hotter name than any in hell, my name's Macbeth. Young Seward says, The devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ear. No, nor more fearful. Young Seward says, Thou liest, abhorred tyrant. With my sword, I'll prove the lie thou speakest. Okay, so he urges him on, and young Seward, okay, fights with Macbeth. And unfortunately, young Seward is slain in the midst of this. Okay, so maybe a heated sword fight takes place on stage for entertainment, and then Macbeth says, Thou wast born a woman. But swords I smile at weapons laughed to scorn brandished by men that's of a woman born again he is still um i can see him laughing haughtily after having killed this young man who is who must be born a woman okay again uh reaching back into those apparitions okay so he exits off the stage and there's alarms and now enter macbeth uh, macduff i'm sorry Macbeth is not on the stage. That way the noise is, tyrant, show thy face. If thou be a slain, and with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghosts will haunt me still. So notice here that he is even saying, Macbeth, you better not be killed by anyone else because I want to do it. Macbeth wants, uh, Macduff wants to kill Macbeth with his own two hands because he murdered his family. Revenge, right? I cannot strike at wretched kerns whose arms are hired to bear their stays. Either thou, Macbeth, or else my sword be with an unbattered edge I sheath again undeeded. There thou shouldest be. By this great clatter, one of the greatest notes seems brooded. Let me find him fortune, and more I beg not. He exits. Okay, so he is traveling in the movie you would see that it's a major it's a big building and they're kind of you know in a maze like looking for one another and so he leaves in search of Macbeth and enter Malcolm now and Seward Seward says this way my lord the castles gently rendered the tyrant people on both sides do fight the noble thanes do bravely in the war the day almost itself professes yours and little is to do okay so Seward is reporting to Malcolm that we're doing well, okay? It's all, the crown is practically yours at this point. Malcolm says, we have met with foes that strike beside us. Seward, 
enter, sir, the castle, and then they exit. And that's the end of the scene.